think there's some sort of thing in Jewish law that right? you're called old when you don't mind being called old. <laughs> I guess so. so. If you mind being called old, then it's a problem. Then, 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 then you're not old. Yeah, but but there's no question. If I look back, right, um, there are things that I do now and that I think now that I would do differently if I had the same thought out process, right? Almost to the point where sometimes I really regret. Well, I'm not proud of things I did when I was very young. You are listening to The JP Show. Where we discuss the issues you care about from a Jewish perspective. I am Rabbi G. And I am Rabbi Levy. And we hope you enjoy this episode. Okay, and welcome back to another JP episode. Hello, everyone. Um, last week we had an amazing guest. Hope everyone listened to it. If you haven't, you should. It was very, very inspiring. Definitely. And uh, Rabbi Levy, you've been very busy this week. We, uh, it is a very busy week. A little coming up soon. Yes, it's big, big stuff coming up. Everyone should stay tuned. Watch the space. Big things happening at Binner. And we'll, uh, in the next we'll, few we'll weeks. get into that over the next few weeks. In we sure show. We so, yeah. but in the meantime, what's for today's topic? So, this is actually a special week for me. Um, it is my birthday this week. Ooh. My only and real birthday, my Hebrew birthday, Chav Vav Av, the 26th of Av. You know, um, 26 is a special number, right? 26 is a special number. Uh, God's name. That's right. The numerical value of God's name, the Yud and the Hey and the Vav and the Hey, 26. That's why you must be such a godly person. <laughs> That's the goal, right? Um, it is interesting, just by the way, Tommy, nothing to do with what I want to discuss, just literally came to my mind now. So my name is Levi Yitzchak. That's my full Hebrew name. I believe you always wanted to call your son Levi Yitzchak. Is that correct? Because I'm named after the Lubavitcher of his father. Correct. It just so happened to be, and in fact, I think you were going to call um, your first son Levi Yitzchak, um, but for a certain reason that didn't happen. Um, and yeah, that's, that's my oldest son, and, and that was um, someone at Plastway in the family, whatever family, yeah. Kind of name. Yeah. But it's interesting, I was born six days after Reb Levi Yitzchak Schneerson, the Rebbe's father's yard site, which was just this past Shabbos. Yeah, this past Shabbos, um, 80th, 80th year site. It's just interesting that like that happened. And then yeah, you, know, true, you, you wave to Amy very close proximity to his yard site. That is true. Um, so I'm turning 33, which is, you know, I'm, okay, I'm old, but it's, it's, it's getting older. It's moving um, along. It's, move, it's moving along. Um, you know, you're slightly older. So I wanted to discuss the idea of getting older. Oh. Um, and this idea of since I'm very experienced. That's right. Since, since you've experienced both being young and older, not old, but older. Um, yes, yeah, so let's discuss that a little bit. So, what, what do you think is the advantages of being young, and what do you think the advantages of being old? Older. I don't mean old, like you know, someone who's very old. Just, what's the advantages of getting older? So, you know, it's funny you say that because the Baba Chileb actually once spoke about it and he always wanted the, the combination of both. So there's no question that in youth there's amazing passion, determination, um, enthusiasm, excitement, which is always the way to go. That sort of kind of tempers a little bit when you grow older. Mm. Um, but there is... Um, is experience, life experience that comes with being old. Now, it doesn't mean that when a person becomes old, they have to lose their enthusiasm. I like to, you know, sometimes age is a bit in the mind also. Um, yeah. I like to think I'm still a bit passionate, but, you know, you definitely slow down a little bit. But uh, it doesn't mean that people who are young are stupid. They're not. Um, and also, it doesn't mean that people who are older, by the way, have experience. Um, you know, experience is also something you learn from. So you have to learn from your past. Mm. Um, and and but but the, in in general terms, that is the difference, right? The the maturity and the life experience and the wisdom, not wisdom natural, but the wisdom that comes from life. I think um, an experience of life just becomes stronger when you're older. But you know, young, you know, when we knew Shiva, for example, it was always known like we you know if there'd be something needed to be done, if there was a new director from the Rebbe, for example, if there was a, you know, who are the people that would drive it and make sure it happened. The Bacharim, the young Yeshiva students, right? They were the passionate ones. 
that it, that happens still in the world, not always in a good way, by the way. Sometimes we know that uh, some of the really bad things happen because of youth. I think um, we, we see that today. A lot of the uh, very wise protests happening are, are coming from, I mean, I say that wise, I mean, in, in you know, sarcastically, uh, are coming specifically from younger people in college campuses. And, and they're saying the most ridiculous, unthought, unthought out ide ideas, shallow <laughs> ideas, and evil ideas, actually. Yeah. Very, very impulsive, very instinctive. But on the other hand, in a good way, instinctive, impulsive things bring bring creativity and they bring innovation. It's it's, it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, the Gemara has an interesting thing. The Talmud has a very interesting thing about youth and, and age. It says um, sometimes it says you can have where the building of the youth is really destruction and the destroying of the that's done by the older is really building. In other words, there's sometimes I mean that the, the, the the ideal situation is when you combine both. In other words, when um, the youth drive, but they drive looking for guidance from those who have experience. Yeah. So that's 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 the optimum. Um, it doesn't always happen. You know, it's a really interesting thing you talk about this because you know I, I feel that I mean I don't consider myself old. I'm not an old man, but I suppose I mean pencil relative, I suppose. But <laughs> it's laughing. Okay. Um, I think there's some sort of thing in Jewish law that you're called old when you don't mind being called old. <laughs> I guess so. so. If you mind being called old, then it's a problem. Then, 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 then you're not old. Yeah. But but there's no question. If I look back, right, um, there are things that I do now and that I think now that I would do differently if I had the same thought out process, right? Almost to the point where sometimes I really regret. Well, I'm not proud of things I did when I was very young. But there's no other way to happen. Like I always think, like, why does it have to happen that way, right? Hmm. There's no other way for it to happen. Like, you need to make mistakes, right? Right. That's part exactly. That's part of life. You actually need to make youthful mistakes, passionate mistakes, sometimes immature mistakes. Um, you just need to have. You just need to do that, right? Um, so there's no point in agonizing over that. But just that's just how life happens. The blessing is if you can look back and not and not ignore the past. In other words, learn from it. So that's what we have to strive for. Not necessarily redo it, but learn from it. Right. How about this concept of, and I'll just sort of, I think maybe there's a different way to look at this, but like this idea of trying to stay young, um, you know, trying not to let age. So I, I guess, you know, you could say staying young can mean different things. Like it can mean, like you're saying, stay youthful and optimistic and, and energetic. Then there's, I, I think, there is this um, problem nowadays where people, don't really want to grow up, meaning to say, like, it's just great being, uh, you know, in your early 20s, you can go party and then not have any responsibilities. And and I think what happens is a lot of times that people think that way and then they get married and they have children and like, they're sort of like, quote, right. two worlds. Like on the one hand, I have children. On the other hand, I still want to go out with my friends every night. Like, I think it comes to a point where I need to like, grow up. Yeah. What do you, what do you yeah, think? That's what such a good point. point. I think that's, I think that's right. I think when you say staying young, it's a different concept altogether. Staying young means always to look at young people, surround yourself with young people, and learn from the enthusiasm, excitement, and passion, and never to give up. Like you know, the Baba Chereva, for example, hated retirement. Yeah. Um, like the retirement of like now I'm just going to spend time myself, and I'm going to you know travel and all that kind of stuff. He says no, we're here for a purpose, and we. I mean, that purpose could change. It doesn't mean you have to do the same job your whole life, but. Yeah. Um. And I was just talking to someone the other day that actually is kind of semi-retired, but now he has more time to do communal work, which is different. Hmm. Right? It's different than saying, I'm just going to be able to go travel on my boat for six months or whatever. Right? So I think I'm staying young means that you, 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 you realize that God can give us power and strength and doesn't matter how old we are, it's in the mind. And you just need to really, you know, stay focused and keep doing as long as we have the strength to do it. On the other hand, that's, that's what staying young means. But staying young sometimes means, and you're right, that people forget actually... We, we in, Jew, in Jewish thought, actually, we talk about maturing quickly. Uh, the whole idea of bar mitzvah, for example, means that when you're 13 already, you're supposed to take responsibility. In fact, I don't know if people know, like by a bar mitzvah, um, and the same is true by a bas mitzvah, the same idea, but, but this happens by a bar mitzvah. When a boy gets his first call up, his first aliyah, the father actually makes a blessing. I don't think people uh, stop to think about what it actually means. It's mm -hmm. a very interesting blessing. It actually means thanking God that I'm no longer responsible for this child, basically. Not literally, obviously, you still provide for them, but like you're not responsible for their... The message is you're now responsible for yourself. You have to actually make choices. That's I grew up. And especially in Jewish law, especially by 20. Mm. You know, that's why you're supposed to be able... It's like settling down, as they call it nowadays, 
is something that Judaism wants people to do fairly quickly and fairly young. That's the idea. The idea is you're born with this spark and this fire and this sort of almost maturity, but you're supposed to maintain that in terms of the passion, but not you're supposed to look towards, okay, so why am I here? What am I doing about it? Like, so let's let's settle down and get on with it. Yeah. And getting older, I think, definitely comes with more responsibilities. Um, you know, when I say getting older, I mean like from your 20s to your 30s and all that. I think part of what happens is people are not happy. I think there's a general principle of life, actually. Like it comes from a lack of acceptance that you need to accept the fact that your life is now different. Once you accept that, then then then, then there's sort of there's more happiness. You know what I'm saying? Like if you if you if you if you still haven't accepted the fact that you can't just walk out of your house and do whatever you want because you're married with kids and you have a job and then you're you're you know you have responsibility, there's always this constant like I want to be something else that I'm not now, like I'm trying to be in two different worlds. A person sort of makes you know, it comes from it comes from maturity, also knowing a spiritual maturity, knowing that life is not a party, yeah, and life wasn't intended to be one. Like, yeah, but we can all enjoy ourselves, or we should, or we can. But it, it's about, it's about it boils down to purpose again. Same idea. It boils down to purpose. That if we know we're here for something, it's not about it's, it's not about holding out as long as I can to party and do what I want, and then you know, it comes a time I just got to settle down because I got to earn a living or maybe get married. You know, oh, so it's sort of. You know, force, I'm forced into it, so I'll do it. I mean, then that doesn't make for a happy life, yeah. right? When you're ingrained very, very early on that, no, we actually have to strive towards purpose, then then we're able to do it and, and do it quickly and be happy with it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So what do you think about, let's go a little bit of a tangent over here. Um, if a person gets wiser as they get older, so like I'm, I, for sure, when someone is 35, they probably have a better idea of, what their life is all about, what their perspectives on life are. Um, so why why get married young? We may have discussed this in the past, but like wh why, I mean, you got married pretty young, I got married pretty young. Torah in general encourages people to get married young. I, I, I don't I, I don't mean at 15, I mean like, you know, you're sort of in your early 20s. Um, like why make such a life-changing decision if you're lacking sort of basic wisdom? <laughs> That's a good question. So I think I think the way it works is that what Judaism actually encourages and advocates for is the following, right? Because it's again the same thing. The the decision to get married actually, first of all, marriage is a crazy idea. That's right. Right? Two completely opposite people living together for the rest of their life and sharing everything with each other is actually a crazy idea. Yeah. Um, and it works for two reasons. It works because you jump into it when you're young. So actually, that's why you, you get married, you know, because no, and also settling down. No, and the idea is because also people think marriage is like something the end of a journey. Mm. It's not. It's the beginning of a journey, and and ma marriage is something where you settle down and you've got to make it work. Yeah, of course, you have the building blocks and you have the main ingredients. We've talked about this before in the shidduch system and all that. But of course, there has to be compatibility, a bit of chemistry, values, um, you know, attracted to the person, and so on and so forth. But then after that, doesn't matter what age you get married, you have to make it work. I don't know if there's any research that if you get married older, there's less breakup. I don't think so. In be interesting fact, I think it might be the opposite. Yeah, it's true. No, I think also, I think also part of it is when you get married young, it almost forces you. Like it's, it, 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 it almost makes you grow up faster, right? It's like sort of... Uh, yeah, and, you grow, and, and, you grow, and you grow up together. Yeah. I mean, obviously we're supposed to prepare for it, people have to train us for it and so on, but, but you actually grow up, you grow together. You build yeah. together, you grow together. Yeah, for sure. I'm a big fan of getting, of getting married young, by the way. Yeah, no, I, I'm, 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 I'm very aware. Uh, <laughs> like, I think actually I was the same age as you. I think I, I was 22 and I got married. How old were you? Also 22, right? Uh, 22, yeah. Yeah, same age. Um, right, so, which is for sure. I mean, you know, well, you're, still, you're, still going strong. But <laughs> what is it now? 55 years? I don't even know. I'm joking. <laughs> Not quite. Um, cool. 47. Sorry? 1987. Whatever that is. Do the math. Do the math. What, what do you find now? Because you're obviously a little older and you deal a lot with younger people. What do you find younger people are like nowadays? Sort of in their 20s? Like, are, are they searching? Are they, are people, sort of, where, where, where are we holding with things with, with, with sort of the younger generation? And that's a very broad question. I, I, I don't even necessarily mean in their Judaism. I mean, just in general with their 
perspective on life, with their maturity? What do you find? No, so I think, first of all, I mean, I deal with a lot of young people, you're right, and they, and they are amazing people. A lot of them are searching and actually thinking. They're thinking really, but they are affected. They're definitely affected by by culture, by the common culture today. And that is, there is a culture which is completely the opposite of what we've been talking about, which is settling down much longer, like aimless, in other words. And I think I think it's a culture which generally, as we've talked about this before, it's a culture that is missing purpose. Mm. When you're missing purpose, like it just doesn't like, you know, I'll do a law degree, no, I don't like law, so I'll try something else. And and then like by the time you know it, you've like got three degrees or you've tried three degrees and you still don't know what you're doing. Right. You haven't settled down and you know kind of thing, right? So I think to settle down early needs a couple of things. It needs first of all a bit of focus, value focus, I'm talking about, like what's values of life. And that idea that I can whatever I do, I'm gonna to live by those values. So I'll make a decision, I'll run with it, and I'll live by those values. And secondly, well, sometimes let's take a bit of leap of faith. And faith also isn't such a strong commodity these days. So, mm. but I think I, I'm finding a lot of them are realizing actually that they, I just recently had a discussion with a bunch of young people about communication and about connection. And they and they they were telling me, it's funny, I wasn't telling them because you've got to be, you know, how like some one young person said to me at a, at a, at a Kayama session, you know, she said, I think it was a she, she, she said to me, you still remember the time without technology. We don't even remember that time. Yeah. And and recognizing and acknowledging how that's a problem, yeah. and how it's changed people's way of communicating and connecting, and it's also got to do with it. So, uh, I'm actually encouraged that people are at least thinking about it, and they realize yeah, it's actually yeah, that's that's a problem. Thinking about. I think part of our mission as well is to make older people young. What I mean by that is one of the things we always talk about is people should never say, "Well, I'm 65 years old. I am who I am." This is where I'm going to remain for the rest of my life. You know, we'll we'll talk about this more over the coming weeks, but we're coming now to the time of change, the time of mm -hmm. improvement. And that and that and that has to apply to everyone. I think people who are sort of set in their ways, this is who I am, this I'm going to remain until 120, that's also a very bad perspective. So no, in a way, you do need to settle down when you're young, but you should never become old. Settle down in the sense that like this is who I am now for the rest of my life. Good, 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 good. Um, and, and we see people who change much older in very fundamental ways, which is which is very inspiring. No, correct, correct, beautiful, yeah, amazing. All right, keep young, everyone. Okay, stay, stay focused, keep young and healthy, <laughs> and we'll see you next week. Absolutely. Thank you,